just kind of talk to you today about as we go in uh, to a new year of who we are in Christ Jesus and what are we supposed to be doing we're not to be complacent we're to be exactly who God says that we are we are not allowed we 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 do not allow the world to get us to begin to question who we are The Bible tells us exactly who we are, how we're supposed to act, and how we're supposed to live as Christians. And we're supposed to do it with enthusiasm. Amen? We're not supposed to be walking around looking like we've been eating lemons all day long. We're supposed to be born-again, spirit-filled Christians on fire for God. And we are supposed to understand that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that means that, that we just don't walk around looking like sour pusses all the time. We walk around, we don't walk around looking spiritually weird either. We walk around with the joy of the Lord that is in our strength. Matter of fact, uh, just recently I put on my Instagram to let everybody know that I am a Jesus freak. Period. I'm not ashamed of it. I am a Jesus freak. And then I got some interesting comments from that when I put it, uh, of course it went on Facebook too. And and so I I got some some feedback concerning, you know, people say, well, that that sounds like something weird, something that you see at a circus. And I said, no, you need to read the definition. Listen to this. Listen to the definition. Did you know the word Jesus, the two words Jesus freak is actually in the dictionary? I remember in 1995 when DC Talk, came out with an album called Jesus Freak and, and uh, with Toby Mac and, and, and some of the other guys. And, and, and I heard that song, and I got excited about that song, and I said, that's who I am. Praise God. That's my identity. Listen to what the dictionary says that a Jesus Freak is. A Christian with an intense, energetic, and extraordinary enthusiasm for Jesus Christ and His teachings. Amen. Turn to somebody next to you and say, wake up. He's talking about you right now. That's you. That's you. That's you. Now, what is the anonym to that? The anonym is someone who is dull, low-key, and obscure. Turn to somebody next to you and say, that is not who you are. Now, listen, listen to the definition of freak. It means a devoted follower and zealous enthusiast demonstrating extreme excitement and joy. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and smile and say, that's me. I know some of you that hurt your face to smile, but it, it'll be okay. The, listen, the, the anonym to, the, it, it, to, to, to freak, the anonym is one that is ordinary. You are not ordinary. How can anybody be ordinary when the Spirit of God is living on the inside of you? When Jesus and the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. The origin of the word freak means this, a sudden turn of mind. That goes back to what we call repentance. It's a change of mind. We change our mind. We get saved, receive Jesus Christ. It also means to dance. It means to dance. It means to be bold because the Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen? So the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, this is your identity. This is who you are in Matthew, the fifth chapter. Verses, yes. Verses 14 and 16, it says, you are the light of the world. You are the light. He didn't say you're going to become the light. 
He said, you are the light. Meaning right now, sitting in this auditorium or wherever people are watching us, you, if you're a born-again Christian, you are the light of the world. He didn't say you're just the light of the city. He didn't just say you're the light somewhere in your neighborhood, even though you are. But he said, you're the light to the whole world. And and the world means a system organized that is antagonistic against God. And if it's against God, then it's against everything that stands for God and believes in God. He says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Notice that your light shining, is, 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 he compares it to and ties it in with our works. The works that we do, the life that we live, how we live. But he said, you don't take a lamp and put it under a basket, or you don't put it under a cover. A light is to be shining. It is to be on a lampstand. And, and, and when you want darkness to disappear, you turn the light on. As Christians, this is who we are. We're the light. You can't go to school and hide yourself and hide your light. You can't go to work and cover your light up and hide it. That's not who you are. That's not who you were created to be. You were created to shine. You were created to continue to let people see in your works, your deeds, and your activities that you are a Christian. And as a Christian, our faith is different than any other faith in the whole world. It shines out with the life of almighty and all-powerful God. It is the life of Jesus Christ being on exhibit for every single person to see. Every person to see. Our faith is transparent, transcendent, and transformational. Our faith teaches us to cross over obstacles, to shout down walls, and to speak to the mountains of circumstances, and even walk on water in the midst of great storms. Our faith and obedience enables us to survive the fires of life, the den of lions, and to silence critics, and the naysayers, and the doomsayers. Our faith empowers us to see the invisible, to believe the impossible, and hope for the incredible. Hallelujah. It is not a coincidence that in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 3, where there was darkness, and the word darkness there means in the Hebrew ruin and emptiness and chaos, that God would declare and send the one thing that could fix the problem that darkness produces. And what was that? It was light. God said in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light, saw the light, and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Light and darkness do not go together. Amen? They don't go together. That's the reason the Bible says... Uh, over in, in, in uh, Corinthians, I think it's in 2 Corinthians, the, the sixth chapter, it talks about what does light, ha- what kind of, uh, what does light, uh, light does not fellowship with darkness. Amen? Light witnesses the darkness. Light lives its life inside of a world of darkness. But we don't become the darkness. We are not the darkness. He says, let there be light. When it says the earth was that without form, the word without form means this, to lie in waste, a desert, a worthless thing, empty, confused, chaos, disorder, and negative. That sounds like the world that we're living in right now. It sounds like a lot of lives, it was like my life before I got saved. The word void means a state of emptiness and ruin. Anybody that has not received Jesus Christ as Lord of their life, they're still living in darkness, and there is a state of emptiness. And there is spiritual ruin in their life. 
darkness, the kingdom of darkness. And I taught about that before uh, we went into uh, the, the, the Christmas service. And, and the word darkness means this. And this is, this is what is inside of the kingdom of darkness. This is what pro- the kingdom of darkness produces. Darkness means this. In the Hebrew, it means misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. And you can add sickness and disease and everything else to that. Sin to that. And that's what's in darkness. That's what people, when they're operating in darkness, that's what they have to, to, to look forward to. But God's answer to every problem, issue, circumstance, and, and desperate situation is always light. No matter where you find misery and you find sorrow and destruction, light is always the solution. And, and, and the Bible says that God is light. He's the solution to every problem. The Bible says Jesus is light. His word is light. And you and I are light. Listen to 1 John, the first chapter, verse 5. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And then in John, the 8th chapter, verse 12, it speaks of Jesus. Jesus spoke to them again and saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life, which is the life of Almighty God. And then in Psalms 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. People are saying, where am I going? Uh, uh, What's my direction? Uh, Who am I? The word of God tells you that. It gives that to you. And matter of fact, it's the word of God we use anytime that we have to deal with the kingdom of darkness. Anytime that the enemy shows up, demonic spirits, principalities, powers, we deal with it with the light. The darkness is no match for God's light because he's no match for God. He's no match for God's word. He's no match for Jesus. And he is no match for you because you are the light of the world. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Don't try to hide your Christianity. Don't try to hide who you are. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed of your Christianity. Listen, I've got some news for everybody. It's something that we need to understand. The Bible tells us in the book of of Revelation that there are no cowards in heaven. You realize that? There are no cowards in heaven. And and the Bible is is, is very specific uh, concerning that statement and talking about that. In other words, you can't be a coward and live for Jesus. You're supposed to be bold as a lion. You're supposed to be light. Light. And so so we are God's end-time lighthouses and luminaries to to humanity. Yes, we see that the world is getting darker. But we are to shine brighter. Not fearing the darkness and therefore hiding our light. Darkness cannot defeat light as long as light is shining because it is plugged into the power source. We're plugged in to the power of the Holy Spirit. So what happens when we shine for Jesus and are not ashamed of our Christianity but walk and live in truth, in love, in truth, in power? Listen to Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verse 1. It says, Arise and shine. I love that. When we get up in the morning, we're shining. I know you may have to put on some makeup, ladies. And us men, we wash our faces and we do all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you, inside, you are shining brightly. You are a bright light because of who you are connected to and in relationship with. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you. In other words, what is God's answer to the deep darkness that people are walking in? It is you. It is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he says, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you and the Gentiles shall come to your light. In other words, when you live your life for Jesus, you're not ashamed of him. And you live your life, you, you, you operate uh, in, in, in holiness and righteousness and you live your life for the, for the Lord. Guess what? People are going to be drawn to you. You know, I, I, I saw a movie one time where this guy got lost in the mountains and, and he was, he's about to freeze to death. And, and, and literally, hyperthermia was setting in. He didn't know what he was going to do. He came across a hill. And when he came across a hill, all of a sudden, he saw a light. And it was a, it was a light that he saw that was coming out of a window in a cabin. And man, he, his whole countenance, everything, there was hope now. And so, and, and, and so he walked over there and, and got to that place and knocked on the door. And the person opened the door and the guy was standing there freezing. And he brought him in and brought him next to the light. And he fed him and gave him food and, uh, next to the fire. Fed him and, and gave him food. And all of a sudden he thawed out. In other words, that light saved his life. And you are the light wherever you are. In your neighborhood, in your home, in your business, uh, uh, where you work. You are the light. In the middle of darkness. And when you try to leave your work and say, I don't like this anymore. I want out of here. I don't like the way they treat me and do things like that. Remember, the darkness will always attack the light. But you still win. You still win. If you hold steady and you hold fast, you're going to be a witness to people and just say, Man, we've done everything we can uh, uh, to, to, to say things against this person and, and, and try to, you, you know, make them quit and all. But they just keep right on producing. They keep right on smiling. They keep right on doing their work, whistling. And, 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 and just, it's amazing to me. Something's different about them. Something's different. The other day, I, I, I went to a, a place to, to buy a present and, and one of our pastors knows the person that has uh, the, the store that I went into. And, uh, and, and the, the guy talked to one of our pastors after uh, I had gone in. And he talked to him. He said, there's just something about him. Now, this guy is Jewish. And he said, there's just something about him. He said, every time I get around him, he said, I feel like being converted. <laughs> it's the truth. He said, it, it, you just... I feel like that. And, 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 and so the next time I went to pick up some stuff, and, and he said, I, I just feel different when I get around you. I, I, there's just something different about you. And, of course, I tell him exactly what it is and who it is, you know. And I believe with all my heart that, that he's going to get saved. I believe it with all my heart. I, I believe I have that inroad to do that. But see, when you get around people and you act the way you're supposed to act and be who you're supposed to be, it, it, even though you'll have people slander you or attack you and do things, yet there are going to be people that the Holy Spirit's going to draw to you. They're going to see and say, I, there's something different about them. I want what they have, whether it's in school or wherever, it, where, wherever it's at. We act differently because we're living in obedience to the Lord. He said, the Gentiles will come to your light and the kings to the brightness. Listen to this. In Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 2. It says in verse 3, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. People are walking in darkness. The whole world, ladies and gentlemen, is in darkness. But if you cover your light, how are they going to know that there's a different life? How, how are they going to know about Jesus unless you're living the life that God's called us to live and being the light wherever you are? When people attack you and all of a sudden at work and try to give you a hard time and you just look at them and say, uh, I'll just double up. What you want me to do? You know, and they say something and, and get right in your face and you say, I forgive you. That blows them away. I, I mean, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath, the Bible says. And the Bible says that when you speak in a way, in a manner, you speak in love, it heaps hot coals on top of their head. So he says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. He's talking about you. 
You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. And they rejoice before you according to the joy of the harvest. And the men rejoice when they divide the spoil. See, as you, and when you live the way you're supposed to live, there's going to be a harvest. It's going to be a joy of harvest in your life. It is, a Christian who hides themselves, a Christian who will not be who God called them to be, that's the most miserable person in the world. Miserable. But when you act and be who you're supposed to be, man, the joy that's in that, the joy of the Lord, even when you're going through hard times and circumstances, the joy of the Lord. See, the light in the life of Jesus lives in us right now. And it lives in us because we're born again, but it lives in us because we are called for a time such as this. Jesus through us, still saves, heals, delivers, casts out devils, and he's coming back very soon. But what are we the light until he comes back? What are we the light to be doing? Well, let's look at uh, the Apostle John when he was writing about John the Baptist. We are to bear witness of the true light that lives on the inside of us. When he was writing about John the Baptist in John the first chapter, verse 6 and 7, he said this. There was a man sent from God. And you could put in there, there was a man, there was a woman sent from God. Wherever you are, wherever you are in this world today, wherever you work, whatever you do, you're sent there by God. You're on assignment by God. You're not there just to hold down a job. You're on assignment by God himself. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that through him, that all through him might believe. God has you in that job. He has you in that neighborhood. He has you where you are right now because there are people that need to, to, to be saved. There are people that need to believe. And uh, it's only through you because you are strategically placed in that, at, at where you are at this moment. And God will continue to lead you, guide you, and d direct you. His assignment is the same for us today. In Luke, the first chapter, again, talking about John the Baptist, he said, to give knowledge to salvation. This is us. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God with, with which the day spring from on high has visited, visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. One thing that I do know about my life before I came to Jesus Christ, my life was empty and there was no peace in my life. And people that do not have Jesus in their life, they're empty. No matter what kind of uh, uh, facade that they put on, what kind of mask they put on, of acting like they're joy and, and, and happy and all this stuff. There is an emptiness on the inside of their soul. And it can only be filled by Jesus Christ. It can only be filled when they become born again. And they themselves become light. And Jesus comes to live on the inside of us. He is the light. And He lights us up. That means that there's spiritual revelation he illuminates us that now we can understand the things of God. We can understand who God is. We can understand revelation of the Word of God. That that does not happen. You can't understand the Bible. You can't understand God by your natural mind. The natural mind does not receive the things of God. You've got to be a spiritual man and woman. And the only way that you can be a spiritual man and woman is when you are born again. So when people are out there doing crazy things, living crazy, you know they're not born again. And if they don't see the light, how are they going to know that they're living in darkness? The Bible says that John the Baptist, he was a burning and shining light. Lamp. In other words, he was on fire for God. He was on fire. Man, he was focused. He knew where he came from. He knew who he was. He knew exactly where he was going. He was a burning and a shining lamp. And that's with us. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which he, the Bible says that uh, John said, there is one who is going to come who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire with fire. That's, that's passion that we have. Passion 
well, I'm just a shy person. You can't be a shy person if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, there's a boldness that comes on you. There's a difference. It'll take you out of that introvert-ism. And it'll make you a different person. Amen? So how about the Apostle Paul? What was his assignment? The same assignment it is for the church today. In Acts 26, 18, it says his assignment was, and he said this to the king, he said, to open their eyes in order to... Uh, in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. You know what our assignment and our role is wherever we are? It's by our life, the way we live, the way we talk, the way we act. It is to that we pray. we're praying for people. I hope you're praying for the people that you work for. Quit murmuring and complaining about where you work and about your boss and your supervisor and start interceding and praying for their salvation. Start praying for them. Eyes to be open. Start praying for them. Quit cursing the darkness and start praying for the light to move forward. Pray for the light to move forward. When you go in, say, God, I go in as your light today. I'm your light shining in this house today. I'm your light shining in this work today. Lord, let, let the light on the inside of me, let it be seen. So he said to open in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Don't you realize that the people that are stuck in those areas, they're, 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 in, they're in bondage to the power of sin, bondage to addictions and all kinds of things. And you're the light and you carry the light. And you have the name of Jesus, and you have the Word of God, which is the light of God. And when you share the gospel with them, when you just tell them that Jesus loves them, and Jesus can set them free, and they see your life is different than theirs because of your actions and your deeds, and they, they see that. You're not, you're not over the coffee pot murmuring, complaining about the work and about the company and all that stuff. You're doing what you're supposed to do, what you're paid to do. You're working hard because you're representing the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're representing the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, let your light shine. That means you're to be the best employer. You're not to be the murmurer, the gr grumbler, and complainer. You're to be the one who says, I, my work is done. You got anything else for me to do? That's light. That's light. It says, so this is our identity and our lifestyle. This is who we are. We're light. We're going into a new year, understanding this is who I am. I'm light. We are light. Listen to what Philippians, the second chapter, verse 12 says. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but also much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We don't get saved by works. We get saved by receiving through faith, by grace through faith, by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and confessing Him as Lord of our lives. And when we do that, the Bible says we are saved. God, uh, if we believe in our hearts that Jesus is the Son of God, that God, that he was crucified on a cross and God raised him from the dead. If I believe that in my heart and I confess Jesus with my mouth, I shall be saved. And then the life of God comes to live on the inside of me. And then at that moment, at that time, now I am to work out with the power of the presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. Now I'm to walk out my salvation. And that's progressive. I grow. I learn. That's the reason that we have discipleship classes. And, and we teach the Word of God so that we can learn and we can grow. That's the reason we read the Bible uh, 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 at our homes. So we can learn and we can grow and be the disciples that God has called us to be. So we now we have good works. Before it was works of darkness. And now we have good works. He says, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. To will and to do His good pleasure. Then it says, do all things without complaining and disputing. That you may be blameless and harmless children of God 
without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. In other words, what he's saying is just what I'm doing now. I'm teaching you who you are. I'm teaching you the Word of God. And Paul said, and, and, and the Apostle Paul says, now live this way, walk this way, act this way, so that, so that all my work, all my study, all my prayer for you, all the things that, that we do is not in vain. It's not in vain. It breaks my heart when I hear that people have backslidden and, ap- and departed from the faith. It doesn't mean that we're perfect. We all make mistakes at times. Every one of us makes mistakes. But I'm talking about a person that just departs and come, does not come back to repentance. A person that, 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 that just leaves for the world's sake. Or a person that just lives one life at church on Sunday and lives a totally different life Monday through Saturday. That breaks my heart. That makes me feel like that I have labored in vain. And, and so, so he says... He says, holding on fast to the word of life. That's what we hold to. That's what we feed off of, the the word of life. So that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. I have not run in vain or labored in vain. When he said that we are to be harmless, the word harmless there means unmixed, pure, and without a mixture of evil. In other words, you can't mix your Christianity with unbelievers. You, you You can be... You can be a witness, but there are times when people want you to do things and go places, and you got to say no, because that's not who I am. That's not me. That's, that's not, me, not me. I love Jesus, and I love his, his Word, and I love my wife, and I love my family. You know, when I was a part of a ministry that, that uh, all of a sudden the ministry got, got into sin and started kind of going down into uh, j- just a- almost an immoral type of cesspool and and Tave and I were praying and believing God that that that, that there was going to be a turnaround uh, because I love the people that were in 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 charge of that ministry that person was my pastor and I I was praying for them and Tave we were both praying for them it kept going down and and one day I was uh, I was approached uh, by by one of the leaders and 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 said to me said hey uh, we're going out and we we've got this uh, boat uh, and we're going to go out on this boat, and we're going to have some fun. And I already knew what was happening on that boat. And I looked at the person, and I said, the person that was above me uh, in, in, in authority, and I said, I, I, I can't do that. And he looked at me, and he said, what do you mean you can't do that? I said, well, I know what goes on on the boat. And I said, I'm not going to go because I'm not going to be a part of it. I said, number one, I love God with all my heart. I love Jesus with all my heart. And I said, Jesus is the one who delivered me out of that type of lifestyle. And I said, I'm not going to do it. I said, number one, it's wrong. It's sin. I said, I'm not going to do it. And I said, number two, I love my wife. And I love my children. And I'm not going to do it. And I love the people that I'm ministering to. And I'm over inside of the part of this ministry. And I'm not going to do it. And the person got really angry at me and, 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 and kind of began to attack me as, as, as being a, a self-righteous and, and holier-than-thou type of person. And, 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 and I said, no, that, you call me whatever you want to call me, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going to do it. We've got to get to the place when people come up. And, and, and by the way, that person came back to me later after the ministry went down. And said, I respect you. So, so there, we've got to stand for what we believe. Can you say amen? amen. So the, now listen to the word perverse. He said, you are shining in light in a crooked and perverse generation. Crooked and perverse kind of mean the same thing. So let me give you the definition of perverse. It means a person who turns aside from divine truth and the right path. It means to be corrupt and vicious to twist and distort godly morals, and to deceive, to plot against the saving purposes and plans of God. It means an abnormal moral condition that is not by birth, but brought on by lustful desires of the flesh and can be inflamed by demonic unclean spirits of lust. It's perversion based upon self-made decisions and choices. 
In other words, you're not born with it. And so the very things that have to do with uh, perverse lifestyle and living and everything, that's not of God. That's of the kingdom of darkness. But see, we are to shine. In other words, if you have come out of homosexuality, you're not a homosexual. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Even though, even, though you may have, even though you may have the desires and you may have feelings still in your flesh, that is not who you are. That is not who God created you to be. That is a part of a perverse generation. And if you're heterosexual and you're fornicating and shacking up and living with people and trying to get sex because you, you want people to love you and like you, that is wrong. That is not who you are. And Christians don't live together to check out and see if everything works. I'm telling you, let me just tell you, when you get married, everything's going to work. You don't have to try it out. It'll work. Amen? And, 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 and so, so that is not being the light. That is living in darkness. That is not being the light. And if you're doing that and you're living in darkness, either get married or move out. One or the other. That is not the thing. In other words, the Bible says this is not who we are. I'm not the alcoholic anymore. I'm the one that is free and favored by God. I'm not the drug addict anymore. I'm the one that is free. I'm righteous, and I've been made holy by God. I'm living and walking as the light. In other words, what you've got to do is you've got to say, this is who I am. Come up to who God created you to be. Start declaring who you created you to be. Come out of that. So, in James, the first chapter, verse 13, it says this, Let no one say, when he's tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. And that temptation comes from, uh, from outside. That's external. It comes how the devil moves and all kinds of crazy stuff. And with people trying to entice you, stir up the flesh, and when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. That's the reason I don't want to have anything to do with it. Because God brought me out of it. I was heaped in it before I saw the light. But then God picked me up, turned me around, and set my feet on solid ground. That's he, once I was blind, but now I see. Once I was lost, but now I have been found. Glory to God. It's time for us to be who God declares that we are. We are the lights of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors. We are Jesus freaks. We are Jesus people. And we're not ashamed of it. It's time for us to rise up and shine with clarity and conviction and courage. We are a city on a hill shining brightly for all to see through the way we live and act and speak. We are the people of God. We are the people of the Word of God. We are prophetic and not pathetic. We are soul winners and true disciples, not denying our identity in our Lord. We are children of the cross of Jesus Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. And the life that I now live, I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We are products of the upper room filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. We are vessels and containers of the supernatural power of Almighty God. We are forgiven, free, and favored. We are called, chosen, and courageous. We are more than conquerors. We are warriors, worshipers, world changers, and history makers. Hallelujah! And in this day and hour that we're living in, let us not stand down and be silent and carol, carol back into a fetal position. But let us stand up 
stand out shining with the glory of the Lord. We need to make a noise that Jesus is still and will always be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody give him a praise in the house. Somebody give him a shout in the house. He's the only way to heaven. He still saves, heals, and delivers. He's coming back, but not for a defeated, failing, weak, wimpy, cowardly, closet-hiding, confused, double-minded, worldly, carnal, prostituted, and compromising church. He's coming back for a glorious, holy, mighty, powerful, on fire, advancing, word-speaking, mountain-moving, water-walking, spirit-led, tongue-talking, praying, fasting, interceding, worshiping, high-praising, hand-clapping, foot-stomping, dancing, enthusiastic, rejoicing, and soul-winning church. Hallelujah! We are the light. We're not Microsoft, Google, Apple, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Starbucks. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are the light of the world, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Remember, God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God who have, who have now attained. You didn't have mercy, but now you have attained mercy. Remember the call. Remember he's called you. Remember who you are. He doesn't call the perfect. He calls the willing. He doesn't call the one who has it all. He calls the one who has surrendered it all. He doesn't call the best. He calls the broken. He doesn't call us just to do the possible. He calls us to believe for the impossible because he is the all-possible and all-powerful God. He doesn't call us to believe for what we can see. He calls us to believe what we cannot say through faith in his word. He doesn't call us to dream small. He calls us to dream big because he is our big and unlimited God. He didn't call us to be fearful and apathetic, but to advance because the righteous are bold as a lion. He didn't call us to be complacent, which leads to captivity. Let me say that one more time. He doesn't call us to be complacent, which leads to captivity. He calls us to be more than a conqueror and go set the captives free. There is no such thing as comfortable Christianity. No such thing as comfortable Christianity. You become what you tolerate. Yeah, there's a real spiritual battle going on. Absolutely. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, there's a battle in our cities, in our states, in our nation, in our neighborhoods, and around the world. Demonic spirits and principalities and rulers of darkness, the spiritual world, hosts of wickedness in high places, they're alive. The spirit of Pharaoh is still alive, holding people in captivity with a spirit of fear and intimidation. The spirit of Goliath still lives mocking and bullying and terrorizing the children of God. The spirit of Jezebel is still trying to kill the prophetic word of God, seducing men and women to engage in sexual perversion and immoral fornication, making men of God hide themselves in dark places. The spirit of Asylon is still dividing homes and churches and relationships and rebelling against spiritual authority. The spirit of Haman is still conspiring and plotting to wipe out and silence all Christianity and the nation of Israel. The spirit of Herod is corroding our political systems with bribery, bribery, sexual misconduct, and sex trafficking, abortion, and dishonesty, and pride. But I got some good news for you. 
no matter what you hear on the news channels, there is one spirit that is more powerful than all the combinations of all the demonic spirits, whether it's in Fedville or Raleigh or Charlotte or New York or Los Angeles or Chicago, Europe, Asia, Russia, North and South America, Brazil, Thailand, Indonesia, China, North Korea, Nicaragua, or the Caribbean. The spirit that is more powerful is the spirit that lives in you. It is the Holy Spirit of the living God. The spirit of God is more powerful. He lives on the inside of us. Zechariah 4, 6 says, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, Now where the Lord, where, 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 where the, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Acts 1 and 8 said, You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses, light. In Jerusalem and all Judea and to the end of the earth. That's Fedville. We are. We are. We are. We are. The light of the world. We must rise up and stand up with all boldness. Because the Bible tells us. In Ephesians, the third chapter, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith. I declare today, for every Pharaoh, there will be a Moses. For every Goliath, there will be a David. For every Jezebel, there will be an Elijah. For every Absalom, there will be a Joab. For every Haman, there will be an Esther. For every Herod, there will be a John the Baptist. And for every devil, there is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ with the mighty name of Jesus and the sword of the Spirit. Somebody give him praise in this place. Yes, there will be setbacks. There will be pain and sufferings and disappointments and hindrances and grief and persecutions. But we're not defined by the hell we're going through, but by the heaven we're going to. We're not defined by our circumstances, but by His covenant with us. We're not defined by the color of our skin, our geographic location, or whether we have a GED or a PhD, but by the fact that we are the children of the living God created in His image. We're not defined by our foolish mistakes of the past, but by the glorious destiny of our future that He has prepared for us. I know we've been going through and will face and go through hell, the valley of the shadow of death. But I have found out one thing in my 40 plus years of serving the Lord. I found out that the magnitude of my praise is proportional to the magnitude of hell that I have been delivered out of by the power of the living God. Let me say that one more time. I found out that the hell that I've been going through, it, I found out that the magnitude of my praise is proportional to the magnitude of hell that I've been delivered out by the power of God. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, chapter, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk. You were once that. That's not who you are now. I'm calling you to come up to a higher place going in this year. Get out of the pits of darkness, the lifestyle of darkness. Come up and be who God's called you to be. Walk as children of light. 
For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. How do I expose them? By living my life as light. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them which is in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is the light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. First John, the first chapter, verse 6, my last scripture, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Would you bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment? I want to give you an opportunity that if you've never received Jesus as the Lord of your life, I'm calling you to come out of the darkness. I'm calling you to come into the light, the life of God. And I'm saying to everybody, as we go into this new year, just like the Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with God, but we're walking in darkness, you know as well as I do if there's sin in your life. I'm calling you to come out of that. I'm calling you to be a representative, a disciple, true disciple, representative of the Lord Jesus Christ calling you to repent of any sin. If you're a Christian, repent of any sin. If you're not a Christian, I'm calling you to be saved. To receive Jesus so that you can come out of that darkness and understand really who you really are. To be born again. A new season, a new life. And I want to pray if that's you in any category and you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to get my life right with God today. Before we go any farther, today, get my life right with God. If that's you, just raise your hand all over the auditorium and say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be in that prayer. I want to be in that prayer today. I want it. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else say, Pastor, that's me. Anybody else say, Pastor, that's me, before we pray, getting ready to pray. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? We need to go into this year with no darkness in our life. We need to go in, be the light, who we are. Thank you. You can put your hands down. Anybody else say, Pastor, that's me. Pastor, anybody else? Before we pray, I'm getting ready to pray. All, all right, we're going to pray. All of you that raised your hands, I just want you to pray this with us, and we're all going to pray this together with all of our brothers and our sisters and all of those that are receiving Jesus as the Lord of their life. And those of you that are viewing, you can pray this with us too. Pray this with me out loud. Father God, I thank you today that I know who I am. I was created in your image to be light to be a light bearer carrying the light and the life of God today I come out of darkness into your marvelous light I believe that Jesus Christ is your son that you raised him from the dead that Jesus is alive I repent of all my sin and I ask your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Today, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. And I thank you now for cleansing me by the blood of Jesus. And I thank you now that I am light in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, stand up and give the Lord praise in this house.